let's testing testing
I'm David Barish, Chairman of the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board. Before we begin, I'd like to ask everybody to turn off or put on silent your cell phones. I better do that myself. Um, with us today is Fred Strathmore, representing Russell Redding, Secretary of Agriculture. Jennifer Langan, representing Tim Reese, the State <coughs> Treasurer. Bob Coyne, representing Eileen McNulty, Secretary of Revenue. Thank you for coming. A quorum of the board being present, I'll call these proceedings to order. First, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we begin a meeting, we have several presentation of service awards uh, for gaming and control employees to be given out by Kevin O'Toole. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairman Barish. Uh, good morning, members of the board. It's always an enjoyable event to begin a public meeting by recognizing employees who have provided competent and loyal service to our agency for over a decade, and they are on their way to uh, their second decade mm -hmm. of, of, of employment with our agency. So without any further ado, I'd like these seven individuals to please stand up. Thank you. And with the assistance of our Director of Human Resources, Claire Yantis, we're going to provide certificates of appreciation to these seven employees. So first and foremost, we have Pam Lewis. Pam began her employment with the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board in May of 2006. And since I have been here for six and a half years, Pam has been my executive assistant. And uh, thank you very much for your service. She has recently um, accepted the responsibilities to also provide support services uh, to Chairman Barish. Thank you very much for your service, Pam. Congratulations. <laughs> Our second recipient is Glenn Stewart. Glenn Stewart also began his employment in May of 2006 as an assistant enforcement counsel in our Office of Enforcement Counsel. Glenn continues his role with the Office of Enforcement Counsel. He is currently a senior enforcement counsel. And I know that during those years, he has been assigned to provide special legal counsel to a number of our bureaus and offices. And for a while, he provided outstanding uh, support to our Bureau of Gaming Operations in ensuring that internal controls of casinos met our regulatory standards. Congratulations, Glenn, and thank you for your service. Our third honoree is Kevin Kyle. Kevin began his employment in May of 2006 as well. And when he began his employment, it was as an auditor. Uh, soon thereafter, recognizing his experience in the horse racing industry, uh, we promoted Kevin to director of racetrack gaming uh, within our Bureau of Gaming Operations. Kevin, thank you very much for your service and congratulations. Angela Harper is our next honoree. Angela began her employment in June of 2006, and she began as an administrative assistant, and she had the opportunity to uh, provide uh, outstanding support services to a number of bureaus within the agency, including the Bureau of Casino Compliance. <coughs> Angela is always looking for new challenges within the division um, and within the Bureau of Casino Compliance. So she applied for a casino compliance representative position, which she's been in for about three or four years now. And she is assigned to Hollywood Casino at, at Penn National Racecourse. Angela, thank you very much for your service. Congratulations. Doug Harbach needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is here at every public meeting, and he's here at all of the other uh, official gatherings of the board. <laughs> Doug began his employment 
with the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board in July of 2006 as the Deputy Director of Communications. And when that position became open for a new director, Doug was the best candidate and the logical choice, and he has been our Director of Communications ever since. And Doug also spearheaded the beginning of the Speakers Bureau, which allows all of our board members and other key executives to provide very valuable information to the citizens of the Commonwealth about what we do as regulators and what the casino industry contributes uh, to our Commonwealth. Doug, thank you very much for your service. <laughs> no, I do not. Do you want me to kiss you on your crown? <laughs> Speech. <laughs> you walked into that. <laughs> Our next honoree is Sherry Meganell. Sherry also began her employment back in July of 2006 as an administrative assistant. Sherry has had an opportunity to work with a number of bureaus. For quite a while, she was the administrative assistant for the um, Office of Information Technology. Sherry had an opportunity to go upstairs and work with BIE in what was a, a, initially a tavern investigation unit. Recently, Sherry has also accepted the challenge to come down to the fifth floor again with the Bureau of Licensing as a <coughs> licensing technician. Sherry, thank you very much for your service. And last but not least, come on away from the wall. Mm. <laughs> She's a very unassuming gal. You, you could walk around here for years and, and, and then all of a sudden recognize Kristen in the hallway. Kristen Hand began her employment in September of 2006 as a budget analyst working for David Wren in the Bureau of Financial Management. Kristen performs a whole lot of very important financial related functions for the board, but the one that we all kind of take advantage of frequently is the fact that Kristen collates and distributes daily, weekly, and monthly information about gaming revenue and gaming taxes, which we all uh, need to know on a, on, a, on a quick basis. So Kristen, we really appreciate all of your efforts. Congratulations and thank you. So let's have a round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. <clears throat> By way of announcements, the board held an executive session yesterday, October 4th, for the purpose of discussing personnel matters and to conduct quasi-judicial deliberations relating to matters that are going to be considered today. Additionally, there was a public meeting previously scheduled for October 26th, and I want to remind everyone that that session has been canceled, that our next public session will be held November, Wednesday, November 16th at 10 a.m. in this room. Um, next, we have consideration of a motion to approve the minutes of the August 10th and September 7th meeting and the transcript of the, uh, transcript of the August 10th meeting. May I have such a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the minutes and transcripts of the August 10th and September 7, 2016 meetings. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. <clears throat> Under new business, we will next hear from our executive director, Kevin O'Toole, regarding the Meadows Standard Breed Association's amendment to their health insurance plan. Kevin. Uh, good morning once again. As you can see, um, we're going to have a, a matter involving uh, racetrack operations. So our director of racetrack gaming, Kevin Kyle, will make a brief presentation. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board. The Meadows Standard Bread Owners Association, or MSOA, has requested approval of an amendment to their health insurance plan and driver's and trainer's retirement savings plan. Under Section 1406 of the Act, approximately 4% of funding received from the Race Force Development Fund is required to be used to fund health insurance and pension benefits for the members of the horsemen's organizations and their families in accordance with the rules and eligibility requirements of each organization. Subsection F of Section 1406 of the Act requires that all health and pension benefit contracts be approved by the Board. 
The MSOA represents the horse owners, trainers, and others that race at the Meadows. Representatives from the MSOA to my left are present today and would like to address the amendment to their health insurance plan and retirement plan with the board. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me a second. I guess, should, should, should he be sworn as a witness then? Yes. Yes. Thank sir. you. I do. Thank you. Again, good morning to all. Uh, we come to you today to ask for a proposal to change our uh, health and retirement plans. It's a small but substantive change. Uh, we reduced our uh, number of race days uh, this year from 208 to 186, approximately 10 percent. So with looking at the uh, retirement and health benefits, we have a, uh, a minimum or had a minimum of 35 starts for trainers and incrementally up uh, from there. Uh, for trainers and 50 uh, minimum starts for drivers and up from there. So what we're asking is to uh, drop the uh, minimum and the incremental numbers to match the number of race dates that we have uh, reduced and that would uh, bring it down. The trainers would go down to 30 starts per uh, for a year to be qualified and drivers to go down to 45 starts and then incrementally up from there. Uh, it's like I said, it's a it's a small change, but it's uh, it's substantive for people that are borderline, that are don't quite make it, or on the incremental side, they don't quite get up to the next level. So that's what we're here to ask for today: is your approval of this proposal. Uh, our attorney Tom King has proposed uh, an amendment number two that I'm sure Kevin has turned into you, and that's the legal reference to what I have said. Uh, and hopefully you can give us a positive view on that. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Just one question. Uh, how many drivers and trainers are there as part of this uh, uh, let program? Let me see here. I have turned. I've got it here. Uh, there's 153, and this is retirement, uh, 153 trainers and 30 drivers and 63 grooms provide a retirement program for our grooms also from the um, from the Act 71 money. Thank you. Because they're the vital part to our industry also. Keith? I'm fine. Any other questions here? Ex officio, any questions at all? Okay, thank you. May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board grant the Meadows Standard Bread Owners Association amendment to their health insurance plan and drivers and trainers retirement savings plan as proposed by the Office of Race Racetrack Gaming. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your consideration. Next, uh, human resources, Claire. Good morning, Chairman, Board Members. The Office of Human Resources had, has one motion for your consideration today relative to the hiring of Mr. Stephen Dunn. Mr. Dunn has been selected as the Director of Information Technology and has completed the PGCB interview process, background investigation, and drug screening. He is recommended for hire by Executive Director O'Toole. Unless you have any questions, I ask that the Board consider a motion to hire Mr. Dunn as indicated. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the applicant as proposed by the Director of Human Resources. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Dave Wren, Director of Financial Management. <clears throat> Good morning, Chairman and Board Members. I'm here today to present a quarterly update of expenditures. Uh, this would include the time period um, July 1st through S September 30th. During the first quarter of the fiscal year, expenditures totaled $7,974,000. This is a decline of 406000 or 4.8% from the same quarter of last year. Um, this is predominantly due to timing differences. 88% of the quarterly expenditures were for payroll, which totaled $7 million. Salaries, overtime, and payouts totaled $4.1 million. 
and benefits totaled $2.9 million. The average payroll expense for the quarter was down about $5,000 per payroll from last year. This is a result of carrying eight fewer employees and a decrease in um, the employer health con benefits contribution of um, about 6%. Despite the decline in health benefit costs, benefit expenses as a percentage of salaries increased uh, to 70% from 68% a year ago. This is primarily, primarily the result of a 19% increase in pension costs. Operating and fix, fixed asset expenses combined totaled $969,000, or 12% of overall quarterly expenses. The largest operating and fixed asset expenses were for rentals and leases, which totaled $436,000. Telecommunications expenses at 113,000 and software licenses at $109,000. That completes my remarks. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Quick question, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dave, just a quick question. Um, what percentage of our annual allocation have we spent so far in the first quarter? 20%. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Under budget. <clears throat> Doug, Office of Chief Counsel. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board. Today we have four petitions before you for consideration. Each is to be decided on the documents filed of record as they are uncontested. In each of the matters, the board has in advance of this meeting been provided with the petition, the answer of OEC, any other documents of record, and uh, th those are, are the sum of the matters uh, which uh, have been presented to the board for each. The first petition today is that of ACE Marketing and Promotions, which seeks to be removed from the board's prohibited gaming service provider list. ACE Marketing filed a registered gaming service provider application with the board in January of 2008, after which it provided services to Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs between January of 2008 and April of that year, and received about $17,000 in payments while its invest the application investigation was ongoing. Ultimately, ACE Marketing was placed on the prohibited gaming service provider list in December of 2008 after it failed to cure deficiencies in its application. ACE Marketing has now filed a request to be removed from the prohibited gaming service provider list. The Office of Enforcement Counsel does not object to that removal so long as ACE Marketing pays a $1,500 civil penalty and files the appropriate application package with the board prior to conducting any further business. That is the uh, matter now before the board and ready for consideration. Thanks. Any questions or comments from the board on this? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board grant ACE Marketing and Promotions <coughs> petition to be removed from the prohibited gaming service provider list contingent on payment of a $1,500 civil penalty as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion is adopted. The next petition before the board is that of Delvin McMillan. He has a request to be removed from the involuntary exclusion list. On March 31, 2015, the board placed Mr. McMillan on the involuntary exclusion list for six months, after which he could petition for removal from the list. He was placed on the list after it was determined that he left his nine-year-old son in his car while he went inside Harrods, Philadelphia for approximately 15 minutes. Although the Chester City Police were called, no, no charges were filed against him. The six-month term has uh, now long expired, and he's requesting to be removed from the involuntary exclusion list. There is no objection to that, and therefore his request is before the board and ready for consideration. <clears throat> Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board grant the petition of Delvin McMillian, McMillan to be removed from the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> Motion's adopted. The next matter is William Jefferson's petition for reconsideration of the board's order which denied his gaming employee permit renewal application. By way of background, in May of 2015, Mr. Jefferson submitted a renewal application for his gaming permit to allow him to continue working as a security officer at the Sugar House Casino. 
On August 10, 2016, the board denied that application based on his lack of tax compliance with both the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue and the IRS. Subsequently, uh, on September 6, 2016, Mr. Jefferson informed the uh, board staff that he is now compliant with his taxes and requested reconsideration of his uh, renewal application. The Bureau of Licensing has confirmed that he now is compliant with his tax obligations. OEC has no objection to that request. So the, the request for reconsideration is now ready for the board's consideration. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Coyne, I assume the Revenue Department is happy? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you. May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board grant the petition of William Jefferson for reconsideration <coughs> of the denial of his gaming employee occupation permit application and that his renewal application be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. The final petition before the board pertains to the Office of Enforcement Counsel's request to revoke Ronald Wentz's gaming permit. Mr. Wentz has waived his right to a hearing and therefore the board can decide the matter on the documents filed of record. The uncontested facts in the matter show that on May 26th and May 29th of this year, Mr. Wentz, who was employed as a security officer at Sands Bethworks, was determined to have engaged in inappropriate use of surveillance equipment. Uh, based on that uh, determination, Mr. Wentz was terminated from SANS and is acknowledged in his response to this petition. Uh, his conduct, it's now the matter of the uh, request to revoke his permit that is ready for the board's consideration. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board grant the petition to revoke Ronald Wentz's gaming employee occupation permit as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Next presenting withdrawals and reports and recommendations is Deputy Chief Counsel Steve Cook. Morning. Morning. The board has received several unopposed petitions to withdraw the applications or surrender the credentials of the following individuals and entities. Cremosa Food Company, LLC, Fred Clark Enlow, Joseph Gerard O'Brien, the General Retirement System of the City of Detroit, the Police and Fire Retirement System of the City of Detroit, GRS PITG Holdings Corp, PFRS PITG, PITG Holdings Corp, Jan Serene Reinertsten, Abraham T. Han, Lucky Nine Enterprise, Inc., Filomeno A. Arce, the Carpenters Pension and Annuity Fund of Philadelphia and Vicinity, the Pennsylvania Regional Center LP5, Can-Am Pennsylvania Regional Center LLC, Can-Am PA GP5 LLC, Can-Am PA Enterprises LLC, Tommy Rosenfeld, Petra Vidmar, and GLP Southeast Properties 1 LLC. The Office of Enforcement Council has no objections to any of these petitions, and as a result, if the board were to grant same, they'd be doing so without prejudice. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board issue orders to approve the withdrawals and surrenders as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Next before the board for consideration are nine reports and recommendation, recommendations received from the Office of Hearings and Appeals. In each of these matters, the complete evidentiary record along with the report and recommendation have been provided to the board in advance of this meeting. Uh, additionally, in each case, the person that is subject to the report and recommendation has been notified that the matter is being taken up by the board today and that they have the ability to come forward and briefly address the board if they so choose. I would note that um, at least three of these persons are in the audience. Uh, the first report and recommendation before the board pertains to Matthew Duda. Mr. Duda was issued a gaming level two employee occupation permit in January of 2013 to work as a dual rate table supervisor and pit manager at Presque Isle Downs. In April of 2015, Mr. Duda allegedly sent harassing text messages to a coworker with whom he had previously had a relationship uh, and some of those texts threatened uh, violence at the property. As a result of this conduct, Mr. Uh, Duda was arrested and charged with terroristic threats, disorderly conduct, and the board thereafter revoked Mr. Duda's G2 permit on August 5, 2015. OEC has now brought a petition to place Mr. Duda on the exclusion list. 
A hearing on this request was held on June 1, 2016, with both OEC uh, and Mr. Duda appearing and putting evidence into the record. Uh, Mr. Duda's participation in the hearing uh, essentially uh, was that his position was that there was no evidence, in fact, showing that he owned a, a cell phone, and as a result, the OEC couldn't prove that the texts in question, which were put into evidence, could, were, uh, were from him. Uh, after hearing all of that evidence, including Mr. Duda's evidence, the hearing officer concluded uh, that his testimony was incredible, and as a result, uh, the report and recommendation recommends that he, in fact, be placed on the exclusion list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding the placement of Matthew Duda on the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion's adopted. Uh, the next report and recommendation before the board today pertains to Charles Harris. I believe Mr. Harris is in the audience if he uh, wants to come forward. By way of background, in August of 2015, Mr. Harris submitted an application for a non-gaming employer registration seeking work as a computer technician for Pendum LLC a board credentialed gaming service provider which is in the business of repairing ATMs and casino ticket redemption units. On his application, Mr. Harris fully disclosed that in October 2002 he pled guilty to bank fraud and conspiracy charges stemming from a fraudulent check cashing scheme and as a result of his conviction he was sentenced to 27 months incarceration followed by three years supervised release and the payment of over $117,000 in restitution. Mr. Harris requested a hearing, which was held on May 24, 2016. Both he and OEC appeared, offering testimony and documentary evidence. Mr. Harris testified acknowledging his prior criminal conduct, but stating that since he has completed his term of incarceration and supervised release, he has also he had no additional contact with law enforcement, continues to make payments toward his restitution obligation, uh, completed an uh, IT training program and education program, and has worked in various West Virginia casinos repairing ATMs and ticket redemption units. He also mentors at his church, engaging young people to avoid involvement in criminal activity. After hearing all of the evidence presented, the report and recommendation issued by the board hearing officer recommends that the board approve Mr. Harris's non-gaming employee application as he has shown substantial evidence of rehabilitation. Uh, that is the evidence uh, or the recommendation before the board and as indicated, Mr. Harris is present. Mr. Harris, do you wish to make any statements or just to answer questions? I state. Would you please stand and be sworn? <coughs> Thank you. Good morning. No, you, you can sit down. That's fine. Good morning, board members, and Mr. Chairman. I just want to just, just say thank you to the um, appeal process give me this recommendation to get my license. I really appreciate it and be here today to stand in front of, you know, the, the actual board just to show my appreciation to be here. And um, I'm looking forward to advancing my career to the highest level I probably can take it. And this is a, um, a, a new step in the right direction. So with this right here, my family's in the back, my wife and my, my two daughters accompanying me just to verify, you know, all the, the levels of accomplishment that I, I made so far. That's what I want to say. Okay. Does anybody have any questions <coughs> for Mr. Harris or for anyone in this matter? Oh, I bet you did. You did. Nobody? Nobody? Okay. Uh, may, uh, may I have a motion, please? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding Charles Harris's non gaming employee registration application as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. The next report and recommendation before the board today pertains to Gerald Laffing. Mr. Laffing was issued a gaming level two employee permit on July, or during July of 2010 and was employed as a pit floor supervisor at the Meadows Racetrack and Casino prior to being terminated on March 8th of 2016. On March 21st of 2016, the Office of Enforcement Counsel filed a complaint to suspend Mr. Laffing's G2 permit. The complaint alleges that on February 24th, 2016, 
This gentleman was charged with unlawful restraint, simple assault, and harassment stemming from an incident that occurred with a coworker with whom he had previously had a relationship. Specifically, it was alleged that Mr. Laffing had sent this woman in a uh, question approximately 100 text messages in a 24-hour period. Uh, later, the coworker went to Mr. Laffing's home to confront him, and it is alleged that a physical altercation took place there where Mr. Laffing was the aggressor. A hearing in this matter was held on June 14, 2016. The Office of Enforcement Counsel appeared providing uh, evidence in support of the allegations made. Mr. Laffing also appeared uh, and testified denying the allegations of assault uh, and, in fact, testifying that he was uh, the victim of an assault rather than vice versa. He also provided pictures of himself showing uh, bruising and scratching on his body. Uh, after hearing all of the evidence presented, the report and recommendation issued by the board hearing officer recommends that the suspension remain in place because, in fact, Mr. Laffing continues to be charged uh, with the felony charges. And that is the recommendation before the board. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding the suspension of Gerald Laffing's G2 employee permit as described by the Office of Chief Counsel and that Mr. Laffing's permit be suspended until at least disposition of his pending criminal charges, at which time you may petition the board to have the suspension lifted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motions adopted. Pamela Marchant's report and recommendation is next before the board. In February of 2016, Ms. Marchant submitted her gaming employee permit application seeking work as a cage cashier at Chester Downs Marina uh, or Harris, Philadelphia. On May 12th of 2016, the Office of Enforcement Counsel issued a notif notice of recommendation of denial of this application based upon Ms. Marchant's failure to file her 2014 federal income tax return as well as a $101 debt owed to the Philadelphia Parking Bureau. Ms. Marchant failed to respond to repeated BIE attempts to have her address these issues. A hearing in this matter was held on July 20th, 2016. Despite requesting the hearing and receiving notice of it, Ms. Marchant failed to attend the hearing and it was held in her absence. At the hearing, uh, the hearing officer took in evidence uh, supporting the unfiled tax return and the debt owed to the City of Philadelphia. And as a result, the report and, re report and recommendation subsequently issued and now before the board recommends that her application be denied. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt, in result, the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding Pamela Marchant's Gaming Employee Occupation Permit application, as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Motion's adopted. The next report and recommendation pertains to Michael Paul. I believe Mr. Paul may also be present today. Uh, by way of background, in March of 2016, Mr. Paul submitted an application for a gaming permit seeking work as account room representative at Harris, Philadelphia. On May 12, 2016, the Office of Enforcement Counsel issued a notice of recommendation of denial based upon the nature and recency of Mr. Paul's criminal history. Specifically, in September of 2014, Mr. Paul pled guilty to several misdemeanors relating to a domestic dispute with his wife and an ensuing altercation with police. A hearing in this matter was held on July 19, 2016. Both the Office of Enforcement Counsel and Mr. Paul participated in the hearing and put evidence into the record. Mr. Paul at that hearing admitted his actions, stating that he'd made a mistake and he has learned from it. He also submitted several letters attesting to his good character. Additionally, Mr. Paul's wife, who was the victim of the domestic assault, uh, indicated that uh, while it did occur, she nevertheless felt that he was an honest and trustworthy individual. After hearing all of the evidence presented, a report and recommendation was issued by the hearing officer finding that Mr. Paul's one involvement with law enforcement appeared to be an anomaly and that there was nothing in the record to question his honesty. And as a result, the hearing officer ultimately recommends that his application be approved. And that is the recommendation before the board. As indicated, Mr. Paul is present. Mr. Paul, do you wish to address us or just respond to questions? Yes. Would you please stand and be sworn? Yes, I do. Thank you. If you have anything to say, please feel free. No, you have to stand. That's fine. I drove from Philadelphia, and it was a long drive. Voice up, please. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I drove from Philadelphia. It was a long drive, and I wanted to come here to face to face with you gentlemen and say, I will take this and grow from it. And okay. Any, any questions? questions? I'm willing to answer. Any questions from anybody on the board? Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding Michael Paul's gaming employee occupation permit application as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion is adopted. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. The next matter before the board today is the report and recommendation pertaining to Juliet Porcelli. I believe Ms. Porcelli is also in the room. Uh, Ms. Porcelli was issued a gaming employee occupation permit on August 27, 2013 and works as a table games dealer at the Parks Casino. In June of 2014, Ms. Porcelli was arrested and charged with several drug-related offenses. She ultimately pled guilty in November of 2014 to a charge of possession of drug paraphernalia and was sentenced to one year of probation and to undergo a drug and alcohol evaluation. She self-reported that matter to the Board's Bureau of Casino Compliance, and subsequently the Office of Enforcement Counsel sent her a warning letter informing her that any further criminal conduct could affect her suitability and as a result and result in the suspension or revocation of her gaming permit. On August 26th of 2015, approximately a year later, Ms. Porcelli self-reported to the Bureau of Casino Compliance that she had been arrested and charged with retail theft, a summary offense. She ultimately pled guilty to that charge on September 3rd, 2015, and had to pay a fine and court costs. And consequently, based on that second involvement with law enforcement, the Office of Enforcement Counsel filed a complaint to revoke Ms. Porcelli's gaming employee occupation permit. A hearing in this matter was held on May 4th, 2016. The Office of Enforcement Counsel and Ms. Porcelli, along with counsel, appeared at the hearing offering testimony and documentary <coughs> evidence. Among the evidence presented was the testimony of Ms. Porcelli's mother, who stated that due to personal circumstances in her daughter's life, she had relapsed into drug use, which may have contributed to her theft conviction, conviction which, uh, by the way, was, I believe, a $90 retail theft, uh, and that she is currently undergoing substance abuse counseling. A board casino compliance representative, when questioned, also testified that but for her two run-ins with law enforcement, uh, Ms. Porcelli's uh, record at the casino was otherwise spotless. Uh, based upon all of the evidence presented, the hearing officer recommends that, in fact, her application not, or I'm sorry, her uh, permit not be revoked, but rather that a two-day suspension be imposed. That is the recommendation before the board. As indicated, Ms. Porcelli is present. Um, okay. The board. Thank you. Would you please stand and be sworn? <coughs> I do. do you have any comments you want to make uh, at this point? I'm obviously sorry for the the retail theft. It was a mistake, never to be made again. Um, I did not. I I was not thinking straight at the time. I was under a lot of stress and I, I, I just apologize. The last thing I wanted to do is lose my job. I truly love working at the casino. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I have a question. Uh, Ms. Porcelli, uh, so I assume from your testimony you were still working at uh, Parks? Mm -hmm. Um, as part of your uh, drug counseling, are you undergoing any drug testing? I, I go to a doctor and I get drug tested at my doctor. And how often does that happen? Every month. I'm sorry, every two months. And how long is the drug um, counseling slash testing uh, going on for? Is it it's, a year, two years, indefinite? It's been two, it's been for. Two, two years and how much longer are you under that uh, mandate um, until I I'm, I'm actually on a uh, medication so that it blocks opiates okay but, but you say and that you're 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 under drug counseling now as I understood the testimony from I Mr. Believe it may be voluntary though I don't think it's court-imposed it's voluntary yes okay 
Okay. Thank you. Obviously, you understand that we can't have any more slip-ups here. Absolutely. Okay. May I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding Juliet Porcelli's uh, gaming employee occupation permit as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Good luck to you. The next report and recommendation before the board uh, pertains to an individual with the initials PS and uh, her request to be removed from the voluntary self-exclusion list. Pursuant to the findings of fact in the report and recommendation issued in this matter, on January 12, 2010, PS entered Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs Casino, met with the casino compliance representative and requested to be placed on the lifetime self-exclusion list. The CCR conducted the mandatory interview with PS and completed all of the required procedures. Thereafter, PS signed an, the acknowledgement form selecting lifetime self-exclusion. Uh, approximately ten, or six years later, on February 5th, 2016, PS filed a request for early removal from the voluntary self-exclusion list. The Office of Enforcement Counsel filed an answer objecting to PS's request, and a hearing was held on June 21st, 2016. Both OEC and PS appeared at the hearing and presented testimony and evidence. PS testified that she'd been hospitalized for postpartum depression and on the day she was released from the hospital after, I believe, a week-long stay, her then-boyfriend told her she could not come home and live with their children unless she had placed herself on the list. PS further testified that her boyfriend took her directly to the, from the hospital to the board's offices at Mohegan Sun Pocono. At the hearing, the CCR, which placed her on the list uh, and processed uh, the paperwork, testified that during the interview with PS, she was sober, coherent, and there were no outward indications that she was being coerced. The report and recommendation subsequently issued by the hearing officer uh, recommends that she remain on the self-exclusion list uh, as the evidence by, presented by PS did not overcome the testimony and documentary evidence put in by OEC. I would note, however, for the record, that subsequent to the issuance of the report and recommendation, PS filed exceptions to it, uh, attaching to those exceptions two documents, one being hospital records verifying, in fact, that she was discharged from the hospital uh, on the day she, was, she uh, placed herself on the list, and secondarily, um, an unverified and unsworn statement from her then-boyfriend indicating that he did, in fact, uh, mandate her be that she be placed on the list because he did not believe or did not support gaming or think it was a useful activity, um, but again indicated it was not verified and it was um, not otherwise notarized or anything of that nature. So those two additional documents were put into evidence subsequent to the issuance of the report and recommendation. Uh, again, the report and recommendation recommends that uh, her request be denied and she remain on the lifetime self-exclusion list. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move the, that the board adopt the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding the removal of PS from the voluntary self-exclusion list as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. And I believe that we may want a roll call vote on this uh, motion. Uh, I'll second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. You want to do a roll call? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh. <clears throat> All in favor? Well, the other way. Mr. Ryan, how do you vote? Aye. You yeah. vote aye. Uh, Tony, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Fight? Uh, even though I made the motion, I'm going to vote no. Chair will vote no. Aye. Aye. No. Since it's a qualified majority, I, I guess the motion fails. Is that correct? The motion fails. Um, and the status quo remains in place, she would remain on the list. You would need a qualified majority to break the status quo. All right. Fine. Uh, the final report and recommendation before the board uh, pertains to Thomas Preston. Mr. Preston was issued a gaming employee permit on <coughs> April 19, 2016 and worked as a security officer at Harris. 
On July 5th, 2016, the Office of Enforcement Counsel filed a request for an emergency suspension of Mr. Preston's gaming permit after learning that he'd been arrested by the Office of Enforcement Counsel and charged criminally with insurance fraud. <coughs> Specifically, Mr. Preston allegedly filed an insurance claim with Progressive Insurance for vehicle damage sustained in an accident uh, for which he had previously already received payment from Nationwide Insurance. As a result of his arrest, the executive director issued an emergency suspension as requested by OEC. A hearing on the validity of the emergency suspension was held this past July 21st. Despite receiving notice, Mr. Preston did not attend. Uh, OEC put in evidence of the uh, alleged insurance fraud, and as a result, the report and recommendation issued recommends that the emergency suspension remain in place. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt in result the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding Thomas Preston's gaming employee occupation permit as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Christopher Swanson is the final report and recommendation before the board today. On April 13, 2016, Mr. Swanson submitted a gaming employee permit application seeking work as a table games dealer at Harris. Mr. Swanson disclosed his cr complete criminal history on the application and BIE's investigation confirmed that Mr. Swanson was convicted on various crimes on five different uh, occasions in a 27-month period spanning between 2012 and 2014. As a result of his criminal record, and because he's in arrears with his court-imposed costs and fees from those convictions, the Office of Enforcement Counsel issued a notice of recommendation of denial of his application. A hearing in this matter was held on August 4, 2016. Both Mr. Swanson and OEC appeared at the hearing offering testimony and documentary evidence. Mr. Swanson specifically testified without hesitancy as to his prior criminal conduct indicating that uh, his transgressions are all now behind him. He further indicated that he currently works as an EMT, volunteers in his community working at a firehouse uh, and with young children in the community, uh, and also works with several medical rescue emergency response units. He also testified uh, that he is unable at this time to fully pay his court costs and in arrears uh, because of his lack of employment. Uh, but he does intend to make good on those obligations once employed. Uh, based on Mr. Swanson's testimony, the report and recommendation issued ultimately recommends that Mr. Swanson, Swanson's gaming permit application be approved. Uh, that is the recommendation before the board. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board reject the report and recommendation issued by the Office of Hearings and Appeals regarding Christopher Swanson's gaming employee occupation permit application as described by the Office of Chief Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. And that concludes all matters to the Office Thank of Chief Counsel. Thank you very Counsel. much. Next we have Sue Hensel, Director of Bureau of Licensing. Thank you, Chairman Barish and members of the board. Before the board today will be one gaming-related gaming service provider renewal certification, one gaming junket enterprise license, and 643 principal key gaming and non-gaming employee applicants. In addition, there will be the consideration of 19 gaming service provider applicants. The first matter for your consideration is the approval of a gaming-related gaming service provider renewal certification for InBet Gaming, Inc. InBet Gaming is a New Jersey-based company that develops side bets and game variations for blackjack, craps, and poker. The Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement has completed its investigation of the company, and the Bureau of Licensing has provided you with the background investigation and suitability report. I have provided you with a draft order and ask that the board consider the approval of a gaming-related gaming service provider certification for InBet Gaming, Inc. Thank you. Any comments from Enforcement Council? Enforcement Council has no objection. Any questions or comments from the board? We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the renewal of InBet Gaming Inc.'s gaming-related gaming service provider certification as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. The motion's adopted. Next for your consideration is the approval of a gaming junket enterprise license for Guazan Arabo. Guazan Arabo is a sole proprietorship junket business that is based in Michigan and conducts business in Pennsylvania and Nevada. 
Guazan Arabo has been operating in Pennsylvania under a conditional license since November of 2015. The Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement has completed its investigation and the Bureau of Licensing has provided you with the background investigation and suitability report. I have provided you with a draft order and ask that the board consider the approval of a junket enterprise license for Guazan Arabo. Thank you. Enforcement Council. Enforcement Council has no objection. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the gaming junk and enterprise license of Gazwan Arabo as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, all, all opposed? <clears throat> Motion's adopted. In addition, there are principal and key employee licenses. Prior to this meeting, the Bureau of Licensing provided you with an order for 11 principal and four key employee license applicants. I ask that the board consider the order approving these licenses. Enforcement Council has no objection. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the issuance of principal and key employee licenses as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. There are also temporary principal and key employee licenses. Prior to this meeting, the Bureau of Licensing provided you with an order regarding the issuance of temporary licenses for 22 principal and three key employees. I ask that the board consider the order approving these licenses. Enforcement, Enforcement Council, Council has no objection. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the issuance of temporary principal and key employee credentials as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Next, there are gaming permits and non-gaming registrations. Prior to this meeting, the Bureau of Licensing provided you with a list of 365 individuals to whom the Bureau has granted temporary or full occupation permits and 204 individuals to whom the Bureau has granted registrations under the authority delegated to the Bureau of Licensing. I ask that the Board consider a motion approving the order. Enforcement Council has no objection. Thank you. Questions or comments from the Board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board approve the issuance of gaming employee permits and non-gaming employee registrations as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Also, there are recommendations of denial for five gaming and four non-gaming employee applicants. In each case, the applicant failed to request a hearing within the specified time period. The Bureau of Licensing has provided you with orders addressing the applicants who the Office of Enforcement Counsel has recommended for denial. I ask that the Board consider a motion approving the denials. Enforcement Counsel continues to request denial in each instance. Thank you. Questions or comments from the Board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board deny the gaming and non-gaming employee applications as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. In addition for your consideration are withdrawal requests for key gaming and non-gaming employees. In each case, the permit or registration is no longer required. For today's meeting, I have provided the Board with a list of one key, 21 gaming, and three non-gaming employee withdrawals for approval. I ask that the Board consider the order approving the list of withdrawals. Enforcement Council has no objection. Thank you. Questions or comments from the Board? I have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board approve the withdrawals as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Next, we have an order to certify the following gaming service provider applicants. Bonland Industries, Inc., Eastern Exterior Wall Systems, Inc., and Schindler Elevator Corporation. I ask that the Board consider the order approving these gaming service providers for certification. Enforcement Council has no objection. Questions or comments from the Board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board approve the applications for gaming service provider certification as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Finally, for your consideration are gaming service provider registrations. The Bureau of Licensing provided you with an order and an attached list of 16 registered gaming service provider applicants. I ask that the Board consider the order approving these registrations. Enforcement Council has no objection. Questions or comments from the Board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board approve the applications for gaming service provider registration as described by the Bureau of Licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. That concludes the matters of the Bureau of Licensing. Thank you, Susan. Uh, the, uh,
The Office of Enforcement Counsel will present 21 matters for the Board's consideration today, consisting of three consent agreements, four revocations, and 14 involuntary exclusions. Uh, the first matter on the OEC's agenda for the Board's consideration is a consent agreement that the Office of Enforcement Counsel has negotiated with Mountain View Thoroughbred Racing Association doing business as Hollywood Casino. Uh, the matter will be presented by Assistant Enforcement Counsel Kim Adams. Mr. Chairman, the Board. Mr. Chairman, members of the Board, good morning. Next consent agreement for your consideration is between the Office of Enforcement Counsel and Mountain View Thoroughbred Racing Association, whereby Hollywood Casino acknowledges there was a procedural violation regarding the table game play of poker. As part of the consent agreement, Hollywood Casino agrees to pay a civil penalty in the amount of $10,000, associated costs in the amount of $2,500. On July 9, 2016, the table game of poker was being conducted improperly at Hollywood Casino when a deck of cards that was being used contained two eight of spades and was missing an eight of clubs. This procedural violation was discovered when the player at seat 10 was holding a six of spades and an eight of spades, and another eight of spades was dealt onto the poker board. Hollywood Casino immediately stopped gameplay and the deck of cards was removed from the table. Hollywood Casino confirmed that the deck contained two eight of spades and was missing an eight of clubs. This deck of cards was in play for approximately three hours. The parties have entered into a consent agreement that within five days of the board order, Hollywood Casino will pay a civil penalty in the amount of $10,000 and associated costs in the amount of $2,500 for the costs incurred by the Office of Enforcement Counsel and other staff in connection with this matter. The Office of Enforcement Counsel recommends the board approve this consent agreement. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them at this time. And Mr. Havizda is here on behalf of Hollywood Casino. <laughs> Just for the record, could you be, stand and be sworn? I'm an attorney. Oh, you're an yes. attorney. Never mind. That's uh, fine. Vizda, H-V-I-Z-D-A. Do you wish to make a statement? Just briefly, uh, Mr. Chairman of the Board, we take this matter seriously following this incident. Uh, we completely scrapped our card renewal, uh, poker card renewal process because clearly it wasn't working. Uh, we redesigned the entire card and dice inspection room and added a mechanical step uh, by reprogramming one of the shufflers to show us if there's a card missing or a duplicate of another card. Uh, so hopefully with those improvements, we'll never be before you with this issue again. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? I have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the consent agreement between the Office of Enforcement Council and Mountain View Thoroughbred Racing Association as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion is adopted. Thank you. The next consent agreement for the Board's consideration is between the Office of Enforcement Counsel and Edward Rogers, whereby Mr. Rogers is acknowledging that, while as a patron of Mohegan Sun Pocono, he inappropriately touched a female beverage server on her buttocks while she was working in the area of pits two and three. As part of the consent agreement, Mr. Rogers will be placed on the board's involuntary excluded persons list for three years, during which time he will be barred from petitioning or requesting a hearing of the board for early consideration of his removal from the list. On March 5, 2016, a female beverage server was speaking with a customer at Blackjack Table SBJ03-305, which is located in Pit 3 of Mohegan Sun Pocono. Mr. Rogers was walking in the area between Pits 2 and 3 with another guest. As Mr. Rogers approached this blackjack table, he switched the drink he was holding from his right hand to his left hand, then inappropriately touched the beverage server on our buttocks with his right hand. The beverage server immediately notified a security officer of the incident and pointed out Mr. Rogers to the security officer. Mr. Rogers was escorted off the gaming floor by the security officer and the casino compliance representative on duty, security supervisors, and Pennsylvania State Police all responded to the area. While in the presence of these individuals, Mr. Rogers was informed that there was surveillance of the incident and he admitted to the conduct. Pennsylvania State Police charged Mr. Rogers with summary harassment, subjects another to physical contact, to which he entered a guilty plea to this offense on March 14, 2016. The Office of Enforcement Counsel and Edward Rogers have entered into a consent agreement whereby Mr. Rogers will be placed on the board's involuntary exclusion list for a period of three years. During this three-year time period, Mr. Rogers is barred from petitioning or requesting a hearing of the board for early consideration of, this, of his removal of the list, from the list. Mr. Rogers may file a petition with the board clerk to request a hearing for the removal of his name from the list at any time after three years. The placement of Mr. Rogers on the exclusion list shall have the effect of requiring the exclusion or ejection of himself from all licensed facilities 
in the Commonwealth, and he is prohibited from collecting in any manner, any matter, any winnings or recovering any losses arising as a result of any gaming activity for the entire period of time he is on the board's exclusion list. If Mr. Rogers violates any terms of this consent agreement, the agreement may be set aside by the board. In the event of such a violation causing the agreement to be set aside, Mr. Rogers shall remain on the exclusion list until such time as he is removed by the board. At this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel is requesting the board accept this consent agreement. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them at this time. <clears throat> questions or comments from the board? We have a motion. Chairman, I move that the board approve consent agreement between the Office of Enforcement Counsel and Edward Rogers as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion is adopted. The next matter on the agenda for the board's consideration is a consent agreement that the Office of Enforcement Counsel has negotiated with TL, <coughs> a self excluded individual licensed by the board. Uh, this matter will be presented by Senior Enforcement Counsel Glenn Stewart. Thank you. Uh, next for the board's consideration, it's Glenn Stewart, S-T-U-A-R-T, -T, with the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Next for the board's consideration is a consent agreement entered into between the Office of Enforcement Counsel and the gaming employee permittee with the initials T-L. In January 2013, TL placed himself on the board's self-exclusion list for a period of five years. By placing himself on the self-exclusion list, TL agreed that he would refrain from entering any gaming facility in Pennsylvania and would refrain from any gaming activity in Pennsylvania. On or about March 8, 2015, the board issued TL a gaming employee permit. On March 29, 2016, TL attempted to gain access to the gaming floor at a casino in Pennsylvania. TL was found to be on the self-exclusion list before he could access the gaming floor. TL was issued a citation for criminal trespass as a result of his actions, and at the time, TL was employed as a table games dealer at a Pennsylvania game at a Pennsylvania casino, and he is still utilizing his gaming employee permit in that capacity. The terms of the consent agreement would require TL to have his gaming employee permit suspended for a period of three consecutive calendar days for violating the terms of, self, of his self exclusion program and for violating the laws of the Commonwealth. This consent agreement is now ripe for the board's consideration. Do you wish to make any comments, sir? Yes. We're not going to use your name, but would you please stand to be sworn by the court reporter? Help me go. Thank you. Please proceed. Yeah. Um, I admit I had a uh, gambling problem, and that's why I, I placed myself on the uh, the list. And um, this past past year, I grew. Um, I just. My, my my mom, she got sick, and uh, she's a single mom, and there's only me and my six younger brothers, and she hasn't been working much hours, and the bill's been been behind. Um, my little brother tuitions, um, and she wasn't moving around, so I just I just decided not to gamble anymore, and um, I work every day now, and all the money goes to her, and uh, I learned my lesson. And I just, I don't really think or urge to gamble anymore or Thank even think about it. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the consent agreement between the Office of Enforcement Counsel and TL as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Motion's adopted. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. The next four matters on the agenda consist of enforcement actions in which the Office of Enforcement Counsel has filed complaints seeking the revocation of two gaming permits and two non-gaming registrations issued to individuals by the board. Each complaint has been filed with the board's Office of Hearings and Appeal and properly served upon the individuals named in, the com in each complaint. The individual named in each complaint failed to respond within 30 days as required by board regulation. As a result, the Office of Enforcement Counsel filed a request for default judgment and properly served the same upon each named individual. Thereby, the facts in each complaint are deemed admitted. All filed documents have been provided to the board, and the matters are presently ripe for the board's consideration. In each matter, we'll read a brief summation and request the appropriate board action. Good morning again. Kim Adams for the Office of Enforcement Counsel. The next matter for the board's consideration is the revocation of Michael Bresney's gaming employee permit. On April 9th of 2016, Mr. Bresney was charged by the Fauquier County Sheriff's Department in Warrington, Virginia, with felony distribution of a controlled substance and accompanying misdemeanor offenses. 
He was then also charged on April 20th, 2016 by the Plains Township Police Department up in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, with felony possession with intent to distribute charges and accompanying misdemeanor offenses. All of his charges are still currently pending. At this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel is requesting the board revoke Michael Bresney's gaming employee permit. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the revocation of Michael B. Bresney's gaming employee occupation permit as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board. Benjamin Farrell, F-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. The next matter for your consideration is that of Ramin Naylor. On June 21st, uh, 2016, Mr. Naylor was arrested by the Parkside Borough Police Department and charged with two counts of felony aggravated assault, in addition to 11 other misdemeanor charges in connection with an incident in which he pointed a loaded shotgun at his girlfriend and daughter. At this time, OEC would request that the board revoke uh, Ramin Naylor's non-gaming employee registration. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the revocation of Ramin Naylor's non-gaming employee registration as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Good morning, Chairman Barish, members of the board, David Tepper, T-E-P-P-E-R, with the Office of Enforcement Counsel. I have for your consideration today a complaint to remove the non-gaming employee registration of Melissa Shales. Michelle's was criminally charged following the alleged abuse of her twin infant children and otherwise endangering the welfare of her three-year-old child. At this point, the Office of Enforcement Counsel requests that the board revoke Melissa Shell's non-gaming employee registration. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the revocation of Melissa Shell's non-gaming employee registration as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Next on the agenda is a complaint to revoke the gaming employee permit of Wade Barnett, Jr. Mr. Barnett was charged with aggravated assault after an accident while he was driving under the influence of alcohol. And at this point, the Office of Enforcement Counsel requests that the board revoke Mr. Barnett's gaming employee permit. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the revocation of Wayne Wade Barnett's gaming employee occupation permit as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. The remaining 14 matters on the agenda consist of enforcement actions in which the Office of Enforcement Counsel has filed petitions seeking the involuntary exclusion of individuals whose presence in a licensed facility are inimical to the interests of the Commonwealth and are li licensed gaming therein. In each instance, the petition for exclusion has been filed with the Board's Office of Hearings and Appeal and properly served upon the individual named in the petition. The individual named in the petition failed to respond within 30 days as required by Board regulation. As a result, the Office of Enforcement Counsel filed a request for default judgment in each instance and properly served the same upon each named individual. Thereby, all facts in each petition are deemed admitted. All filed documents have been provided to the Board and the matters are presently ripe for Board consideration. Once again, we'll read a brief summation of the facts and request the appropriate board action. Good morning again. Um, the next matter on the agenda is a petition to place Brandon Eschegoff on the exclusion list. In January 2016, Brandon Eschegoff attempted to use a fake ID to gain access to the gaming floor at Mount Airy Casino. He was subsequently cited by Pennsylvania State Police with violations concerning driver's licenses and pled guilty. And at this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel requested the board and Brandon Eschegoff to the board's involuntary exclusion list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Brandon Eschegoff to the BGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. I further move that Mr. Eschegoff may petition for removal from the list after his 22nd birthday. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. The next matter on the agenda is to place Maurice Mathiel on the board's exclusion list. In May 2015, Mr. Mathiel stole a wallet while at Hollywood Casino. He was criminally charged by the Pennsylvania State Police with theft of property and access device fraud and has since pled guilty to the theft charge. At this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel requests that the board add Maurice Mathieu to the exclusion list. Questions or comments from the board? 
May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Maurice Mathieu to the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board in voluntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. The next matter on the agenda is Nathaniel Tissimikis. In June 2016, Mr. Tissimikis attempted to use a fake ID to gain access to the gaming floor at Mount Airy Casino while he was under the age of 21. Mr. Tissimikis was subsequently cited by the Pennsylvania State Police and pled guilty. And at this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel requests that the board had Nathaniel Tissimikis to the board's involuntary exclusion list. Questions or comments from the board? They have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Nathaniel Tessamikas to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. I further move that Mr. Tessamikas may petition for removal from the list after his 22nd birthday. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. The next matter for the board's consideration is the placement of Dimitrija Noseki on the board's excluded person list. March 31st, 2016, while Mohegan Sun Pocono, Mr. Novsecki stole a patron's purse and was criminally charged with various theft offenses. On July 1st of 2015, Mr. Novsecki was ejected from Parks Casino after he stole a patron's wallet and for panhandling outside of the casino. No charges were filed in these incidents. At this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel is requesting Mr. Novsecki be placed on the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Demetria Noseski to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. The next matter for the board's consideration is the placement of Tiana TD on the board's excluded persons list. January 19th of 2015, I'm sorry, that should be 2016. Ms. TD, while underage, gained access to the Mohegan Sun Pocono gaming floor, sat as a slot machine, attempted to order an alcoholic beverage, and when requested to produce a valid ID, she refused. She was criminally charged and pled guilty to an offense under our act. At this time, the Office of Enforcement Counsel is requesting that she be placed on the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Tiana TD to the PGCB and voluntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. I further move that Ms. Teddy uh, may petition for removal from the list after her 22nd birthday. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. The next matter for your consideration is that of Jabri Snowden. On October 16, 2015, Mr. Snowden passed posted and or capped five wagers on five different hands while playing blackjack at Harris Philadelphia Racetrack and Casino. At this time, OEC would request that the board place Jabri Snowden on the involuntary exclusion list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Jabri Snowden to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Michael Rowland, ROL and D with the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Next is a request to place Faith Grant on the involuntary exclusion list. Ms. Grant, who was age 19 at the time, gained access through the use of another individual's legitimate identification. She was challenged by security at Sands and the identification successfully scanned. Ms. Grant was on the property for just over one hour. She did not game. However, a cocktail waitress served her an unknown beverage. She was not charged by the Pennsylvania State Police. The matter is now before the board to consider the placement of Faith Grant on the board's involuntary exclusion list. Questions or comments from the board? They have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Faith Grant to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. I further move that Ms. Grant may petition for removal from the list after her 22nd birthday. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. Good morning, Chairman Barish, members of the board, Dustin Miller, on behalf of the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Uh, the next two matters are related, so with the board's permission, I'll read one set of facts and, facts and then ask each individual be placed on the exclusion list. On January 2nd, 2016, Jarrett Nelson and Ebony Walker came to Parks Casino and left their eight-year-old, three-year-old, and one-year-old daughters in their vehicle while they went inside Parks Casino and played slot machines. 
Parks Casino security personnel discovered the children and called Pen Ben Salem Township Police. When Mr. Nelson and Ms. Walker returned to their vehicle over an hour later, they were taken into custody and each charged with three counts of endangering the welfare of children and recklessly endangering another person. At this time, both Mr. Nelson and Ms. Walker have pleaded guilty to one count each of the aforementioned crimes and have been sentenced to probationary terms for their convictions. Uh, the Office of Enforcement Counsel filed a petition to place Mr. Nelson on the exclusion list on May 13, 2016. Based upon the foregoing, the Office of Enforcement Counsel asked that the board place Jarrett Nelson on the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Jarrett Nelson to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion's adopted. The Office of Enforcement Counsel also filed a petition to place Ms. Walker on the exclusion list on May 13, 2016. Based upon the foregoing, the Office of Enforcement Counsel asked that the board place Ebony Walker on the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Ebony Walker to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Counsel. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board, John Crow, C-R-O-H-E for the Office of Enforcement Counsel. The next three matters for the board's consideration are related, so with your permission, I'll read one set of facts and they said each other be fine. Be Thank you. Placed on. Brandon Butler and Jeffrey Norris were discovered in a vehicle in the Meadows Casino parking lot while under the age of 21, and in the, vi in the vehicle, it was discovered that there were knives, an unlicensed and unregistered firearm, a small amount of marijuana, and a uh, a small amount of narcotics were discovered in the vehicle. Upon further search, the owner and driver of the vehicle, Frankie Butler, was discovered gaming inside the casino with a telescoping baton on his person. Brandon Butler was then, sub was then charged with making repairs or selling offensive weapons and possession of a small marijuana, as was Jeffrey Norris. Frankie Butler was charged with carrying an unlicensed firearm. I now ask that Brandon Butler be placed on the board's excluded persons list. Any questions or comments from the board? They have a motion. Chairman, I move that the board deny OEC's request to add Brandon Butler to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. The Office of Enforcement Counsel now asks that Frankie Butler, the owner driver of the vehicle, be added to the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board deny OEC's request to add Frankie Butler to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. The Office of Enforcement Council now asks that Jeffrey Norris be added to the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board deny OEC's request to add Jeffrey Norris Jeffrey Norris to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. And the final two matters, again, are related with the board's permission. I ask to read one set of facts and ask that each person be placed on the exclusion list. Uh, two individuals, Lisa Barzak and Ryan Taylor, were discovered uh, working together and actively participating in a scheme to use other players, other individuals' players' cards to collect free play at Rivers, Rivers Casino. The Office of Enforcement Council now asks that the board add Lisa Barzak to the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Lisa Barzak to the PGCB involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. And the Office of Enforcement Council now asks that Ryan Taylor be added to the board's excluded persons list. Questions or comments from the board? May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the addition of Ryan Taylor to the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board involuntary exclusion list as described by the Office of Enforcement Council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion's adopted. Thank you. That concludes our business. Thank you very much. That concludes today's meeting. As I stated earlier, our next scheduled public meeting will be held Wednesday, November 16th, begin 10 o'clock in this room. Are there any other <clears throat> final comments from the board or ex officio members? If not, <clears throat> may I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman, although it pains me to do so, I will make a motion to adjourn this robust meeting.
<laughs> Second. All in favor. Aye. All opposed. The motion's adopted. Thank you, one and all.